Hello, friends. Coach Bob with you. And today, you know, you see all the commotion. Whenever the dogs are going crazy like that, that means that something is here. Yes. And it's something that I've been talking about doing in my mind. Yes, I do that. I talk to myself. I'm sure you never do that. You're way too sane to do that. But I'm not as, I'm probably not as normal as you are. Anyway, da -da -da -da. this, uh, one of the things that we talked about, uh, Coach Vic and I, when we went on our trip across the country last year, we were doing a east to west and through, we were going through desert areas a lot. We knew in the southeastern United States we had the chance of getting wet. But we also knew once we got out of that area, we were probably going to be dry. So, I got kind of a mess. I, I, I got to do better. So, this time, we're talking about going from Key West to Maine. Or Key West to Canada, depending on, eh, you know, how the whole coof thing plays out. So, knowing that and the parts of the country that we're going to be traveling in and the time that we're going to be doing it, we're going to get wet. So two things have to happen. One, I have to take the pedal commander off of the spider or secure it in another location and use it via Bluetooth. That way I'm not worrying about it in the rain. And the other, I had to get some sort of global positioning system. Ha, you got it, GPS, that would allow me to keep it up on the spider in the rain. I've used my phone. I don't want to use an otter box. I know I can. I hate those darn things. They're just... They're, they're just a pain in the rear end to stick in your pocket. They make the phone too big and cumbersome, so I'm not gonna do that. So I was online, I've been perusing, and I've been looking at GPSs. So I found a Garmin. Now, I'm gonna pull it out of the box here in a minute. You're gonna be very familiar with this, probably as or more familiar than me as of this moment. But I promise you that in the next few days, this thing is good. I'm gonna be so familiar with it, it's gonna be unbelievable. You could call me Coach Garmin. So what we're going to do, we're going to unbox this thing, see what they sent me, and we'll talk about it, how I'm going to mount it to the spider, how I'm going to wire it to the spider, and all that jazz. We're going to do that right now. All right, let's get this thing unboxed, see if I can't do it without damaging the merchandise. Now, also, not only did I purchase the, um, the GPS, I also purchased a case. Ooh, packing slip. I love doing this. Ooh, stuff's tough, man. Lift the old glasses so I can see. Here's what we have here. We have the Garmin Zumo XT 5.5 inch uh, GPS and the carrying case. The reason I got this, other than, of course, to get around. <laughs> kind of stupid thing to say. But... This thing here, this Garmin GPS, come out of the box. So let's open the case first. I, you know, because you want to take this thing off in the evening, you don't want it to get stolen, and I figured this might be a good investment to, uh, to have. So here's the case. Looks a lot like the case. All right, looks nice. It's that hard, soft shell, semi-hard shell case. Looks nice, okay. Hopefully it's open the, it looks like it has a couple of compartments, one on the bottom, one on the top. Let's open the bottom one first. Let's see what's there. It's probably where all the hardware and that stuff is. Yep. So we've got one, two, three, four zip ties, a bag of goodies, a USB charging cable, a hardwired cable. I'm not sure at this point if I'm going to hardwire it in or if I'm going to just charge it each night. I think what I'm going to do is see what the battery life is on this thing. And if it looks like it's going to be something that needs to be charged, we'll say in less than 12 hours, I'm definitely going to hard, hardwire it. So we've got the owner's manual in 37 different languages of which I understand one of them, kind of. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, got it. I've absorbed all of that. So that's the back side of the box. Let's uh, open up the front side of the box. That should have the device in it itself. Oh. Ah. Oh. 
Doesn't look like very much, does it? Um, very nice. Let me grab my phone real quick. Now, I have the larger Apple phone. I think it's the 11, whatever, but it's the larger size. So when you look at it, the phone itself is a little bit longer and the body of the phone with the case is a little bit narrower, but the display on the phone, there's a there's a there's probably a half inch that's in the width of the phone um, that is not functional when, you, when it comes to your actual observable part of the map. So this is going to be a better mapping display, no doubt. It is waterproof, um, so, I'm gonna do a little reading on the owner's manual, get all that stuff going, get it all prepped, and we are gonna put a GPS on this spider. We're gonna update the software. We're gonna get it all going on, and it's gonna be really, really cool. One thing I failed to mention as I was talking about, well, why did I buy this other than to just be able to get around? The reason I purchased it at the time that I did, the Garmin store, um, I, I was just, I was watching a, a YouTube channel a few weeks ago with uh, the, the young lady Itchy Boots is her channel. She's amazing, rides all over the world, uh, rides in some really amazing places. And she is using this particular device. And I was, I'd, been, I'd looked at this before, but it was 500 bucks, 499. I'm like, man, that's a little more than I really wanna spend being a cheapskate that I am. I went online that particular day, it was on sale for $3.99. It said down at the bottom in the fine print, two to three weeks for shipping. And I'm thinking, man, you know, I, I haven't had it for a year and a half. What's two to three weeks? So I waited a week and another week and another week. So now we're three weeks in, I haven't heard anything at all. Um, I'm like, well, maybe I can call them. Well, of course, the store that I'm utilizing, their long line store, has no phone contact, no email. They've got like the little thing where you fill in your name and you fill in your email and you send it out into this, this uh, internet stratosphere. And that's what you do. And so there's no real recourse other than going, you had a, a link that said, cancel my purchase, refund. That was your only choice. So I'm, I said, well, you know what I'm gonna do? It's been three weeks and one day. I haven't heard anything. Let's give it another week. The very next day, I got a shipping notification. So it took them three weeks and two days to get this thing in the mail. It got here very, very quickly. Um, as you know, I had some problems with the postal service getting my Shady Ray sunglasses to me. I was very frustrated with that. Fortunately for me, Garmin sent this thing UPS and it got here very, very quickly. From the time that it shipped to the time that it got here, three days. So very, very pleased with that. So let me figure out what all this stuff is and we'll talk about it here in just a few minutes. All right, so the first thing we have to do is get this thing updated, get the new map on it, all that kind of stuff. So lift my glasses so I can see. There's a USB port right there up under that. I got this plugged into an electrical outlet. Let's see what we can do. Maybe I can get some Wi-Fi out here in the garage. Boom, powered up. Let's pull the little, ooh, it says Garmin right there on it. Very nice. Uh, uh, uh. And let's see, welcome to Garmin, an eco-conscious technology leader. Okay, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. you have to accept all. I think they just got my first kid. Connect Garmin Drive to mobile app to access, oh, whoa, wait a minute, to the Garmin Drive mobile app to access additional features. We'll hit connect now. Get the Garmin app from the app store for your smartphone. Okay. Well, let's do that. You know, you used to just turn something on and it worked. It doesn't, that's not how it works anymore. Back in the day, <laughs> Garmin Drive, get, let's get it. We can do it. Now I will tell you, one of the frustrating things that I had with the, uh, with the stuff that I got for the uh, Can-Am, when I was trying to get the GPS work, you had to pay for maps, you had to do all this stuff. It was very frustrating. So I spent over $100 on the BRP Connect app by the time I did all my map stuff. And it didn't work worth a darn. You, you couldn't plot your course, you couldn't do anything. So then I started using my Apple Maps on my phone, which worked great as long as it's not raining. Use the app to pair to Zoom OXT. Follow the instructions to complete setup. We can do all that. I'll pause the camera while all this uploads. It's boring stuff right here. 
I figured I would share all this just in case I end up having to go off into some sort of crazy tirade. It is the navigation series, I would presume. So we're going to go there and it's saying, find the Garmin device. We're going to do that right now. It just came right up. Look at that. All right. So we got a yes. We're pairing. By the way, this is not what the directions on the piece of paper said to do. They said I could just hook the device straight up to my Wi-Fi, which I probably could do. Let the garbage truck go by. Once I turned it on, it started trying to do other things. And I'm going to have to create an account because I don't have an account. All right, so what we've done here is I uh, downloaded the Garmin application for um, Mac products onto my uh, desktop computer. And I am updating right now. You can show it shows the uh, setup complete, the device is registered and all that stuff. And it's checking for updates right now. So now it's just a matter of the waiting game, letting it finish up with uh, the updates as needed. For it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what comes with it. You know, I've got the, uh, got the updates going. It uh, looks like uh, there were two um, software updates that had to be done. I got both of those done. Now there is a map update. It says there's about an hour remaining. So this gives me a chance to go through all of the parts. So if you have a spider or if you have a Riker or if you have a motorcycle, just give you an idea of what comes in the bag. Um, obviously, I've got the spider cuff by Le Monster. Anyone who's watched this channel for any period of time realizes how I feel about the spider cuff. If there is any one thing you need for your spider, it is a spider cuff. There are tapped holes all the way around it. And you can see I have two Ram balls placed in it right now. I took my phone mount, all that stuff off of here. But these Ram ball mounts, with these Ram ball mounts, you can take out and move them around. There's holes all the way around. So you can have as many Ram balls on this thing as you so choose. In the end, I will probably have three on there. One for the GPS, one for my phone mount, and one for a hydration system of some kind, which I ditched to the one that I had. That's where that is. Now, if you don't have the spider cuff and you're riding a Riker or something with conventional handlebars, this comes in the pack. So this would go around a round handlebar. Now, obviously the spider handlebars aren't like that, but if I wanted to put this on a motorcycle, Obviously that would go around the handlebar and they have, would go around the handlebar in like that, creating that little circle. And you would mount that to your handlebar. You would mount your GPS on top of that. Also provided was another Ram arm that will go on one of these. And then the GPS unit will sit on it. Whether it will be where it is now or whether I'll move it, I haven't really decided yet. The other mounting hardware, this is the RAM ball that will attach to the Zumo GPS unit itself. And this is the little piece that you're charging cable. If you do the permanent cable for the charging port installation, it will all attach right there. And these are the little screws and washers to do that. We'll get further into that once we get it all updated, but that's I'm going to be using the Le Monster Spider Cuff and the, obviously the Ram Ball mounts. I've got several, so now I have two of those, and I have the longer arm as well. What I'm envisioning is my phone kind of, it's kind of stacking them, having the GPS and the phone like that, or the phone and the GPS like that, just dependent upon the best view. Also, I don't want to impede my mirror view. I know that there were some when I did my phone unit, the angle that I took the picture, like you can't see your mirror, you can't see your mirror, I can see my mirror. But anyway, so I'll make sure that I don't impede my mirror so that nobody freaks out about that. So next step is we will be looking at mounting positions for the GPS unit and then determining what we're going to do as far as the uh, permanent uh, electrical installation. Uh, it won't be hard other than running the cable. That's always the hardest part. But if, uh, if all I have to do is drop the USB here, plug it in on the USB and charge it a couple of times throughout my rides, it might be easier not to run the wire and it might even be better just because you worry, you don't have to worry about water intrusion and maybe some other things that might end up being a problem with hard wiring. Anyway, we'll look at all that once we get going on it. Maybe I'll install it without the hard wire at first 
ride it for a week or two, see what I think, and then we'll see where it goes from there. So I'm gonna check on, see how this update's going on, and we'll start playing with some mounting positions. All right, so let's look at how the mount is put together before you put it on the machine. This is the piece that's going to clip into the back of the GPS unit itself. This is the ram ball mount that attaches to the back of the unit. Now, if you're running the, the permanent hard wiring piece, you'll drop in through this slot and you'll bring it out right here and it'll, it'll lock in right there. I'm not gonna do that yet. I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to do the USB thing at least until I can play with this thing for a little while longer. And then I'll see, I, I think eventually I will do the hard wire. In fact, I may do it in the next day or two, but today I have a track meet, so I'm limited on time. So I'm just gonna, I, I wanna mess with this and I wanna ride the spider today and I wanna have the GPS unit on it. So I want to do this as quickly and efficiently as I can. The first thing we have to do is these little insets. There's four of them. You see you have little holes there. This is the back, that's the front. That's where the GPS and the cable, and that's where the cable feeds up through. So these, they show pressing into the back of these. So just press that right there in. Four slots, press them in. You hear Coach Vic in there playing chess. So those four insets just press in right there like that. Very easy, again, this is the back, that is the front. That's where the back of the GPS will press in there. Next up, this is the mounting piece. What I'm doing, it says Taiwan right there. Taiwan, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put upright. Look at that, huh, how respectful am I? From the inside, going to the outside, you're going to have, in this order, a screw and a washer. So let's go ahead and get the screws and washers made in here. Now, when I do the permanent wiring installation, I will have to undo this. That's just part of it. The nylock nut then goes on there. I didn't even bring a pair of pliers in here. We're just gonna get it started. Remember all these things, take your time one step at a time. It's very easy. All right, let's head to the garage, grab a pair of pliers, snug them up. So I've got a small little wrench here and I'm just gonna hold it right there. Get the old Phillips head, snug it up. All right, so we have them snugged up. They're not, not super duper crazy tight. Again, this is the top, has the little clip handle where the GPS will mount and lock in right there. And then this ball will go into one side and then the ball there will go into the other side. So we won't really know until we get it out here the best position for it. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do it the simple way and we'll see how that's gonna work. All right, so now let's go inside and see if the updates are finished, if they are. We'll have a GPS, we'll put on this thing and see how I figured I was trying to make up for the oil spill yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so the Zumo XT, I've learned a couple of things. One thing that I'm not real pleased with, with about it is that the brightness on it, if it is not connected to an external power source, uh, after a few minutes, it drops down to 40%. And it says, unless you hook that to an accessory power cable, you cannot adjust the brightness up, rendering it absolutely useless in the sunshine. It's great at night, you can see it at 40%, no problem. But in the daytime, 40%, it's pretty dim. So if you're traveling on a well-lit, sunny road, you're not gonna see your GPS. So we've decided we're gonna hardwire this thing in. I could run the USB cord and that is very, very simple. It looks kind of sloppy when I do it. And honestly, I think that if you're gonna have water problems, if, you're, if you keep that USB port door open, you're gonna have water problems. And so I don't wanna do that. Using the uh, hardwire method, you don't have to worry about water getting in it. So what we've decided to do is I have my USB port run to an accessory slot that's down in the front. Uh, we've shown you that on a pre previous video. I'll drop a card to that video up here. It's where I installed the USB port. I'll also give you a look in the front here and show you what we're looking at. But basically we're gonna run the USB port and the, the uh, electrical for the uh, Garmin to that same outlet. Uh, the Garmin draws, what is it, Robert? 1.5 amps? Yeah. So 1.5 in the USB port, it was de minimis and it's on a 40 amp block. So we know we're, we're well, well, we have ample power. Get it, ample power, oh! De minimis? De minimis, yeah, the, at least. That's, that's a good SAT word there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing well. All right, so I'm gonna show you this and then we're gonna time lapse as we disassemble this spider. If you want more information on disassembling a spider, you can see some of my previous how-to videos. Anyway, coffee time. All right, now I can't tell you it's gonna be well lit, but I do have a light in here. This is the accessory cable that we're gonna be hooking to with the, um, 
with our Garmin. These two wires right here are coming off of the USB and the other two are coming off of the spider. And that is coming off of the little 40 amp block. So that's where we are, that's what we're gonna do. And the problem is just gonna be simply getting the wire from the handlebars to here, which we'll do all that after we get everything disassembled. So let's do that now. All right, so we made quick work, literally less than three minutes to get the spider disassembled. It's really easy once you do it a few times. Um, the big thing, it always sounds like you're breaking crap when you take this thing apart. That is one thing I absolutely hate about the spider. BRP, if you can make it easier on the old people like us, we would appreciate it. So we don't hear clack, clack, going, oh, did I break that, did I break that, did I break that. This is the mount for the GPS unit. There will be a screw holding this little wire in this end of it. This just pops in. But this is the wire that we have to run. Uh, this is the wire we have to run, so we're gonna feed in through the handlebar slot uh, like we did with the, um, with the pedal commander. And we're just gonna try to follow down a path, come out right there. Wish us luck. There is no real science to this. This is just a matter of finding a path so when you do this stuff, be patient, take your time, don't get upset, don't get rattled. It is going to be a pain in the butt trying to run a wire. There are very tight tolerances in here a lot of times, and it can be very difficult finding a path for these wires. Like I said, there's no rocket science to it. You're not going to take the path I'm going to take, and if I do, did this again tomorrow, chances are the path of travel for this wire would be a little bit different. So we're gonna get on that. We're gonna run the time lapse as we just look for a path. And if I run into any snags, I'll slow it down and there it'll be. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, whereas I had done this at the kitchen table already once before, we're gonna put this together real quick. Once we get this together, we're gonna go ahead and run our wire to see exactly how much slack we've got. What we did, we dropped it down through this notch right down here in the handlebar. You just need to make sure it doesn't bind with the handlebar because you don't wanna cut your wire. Uh, Robert is running this along where I'd run that USB accessory wire and he's dropping down and, and running it up through the front um, Robert, if you need to use any of these other wires to go back up through the other way, through that slot, that little hole, feel free. I think you're going to have a big enough gap where that battery compartment yeah, is. It shouldn't be much of a problem. The, the smaller gaps. So we're going to get this uh, hooked up here. I'll show you how this goes on. Basically, with my glasses here so I can see, you've got the, uh, this is where the Garmin itself mounts, the little switch, the little button right here goes at the top. So this is going to go through like that and then it turns back like that and presses in and then there is a super duper 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 tiny screw that goes in right there and Garmin provides the screw and the screwdriver they actually provide two screws for blind old men like me who drop them on the ground so let's get that done all right I don't want you to think that I was lying to you about the size of this screw here's the screwdriver that Garmin provides. There are both screws. You can see how small those screws are. They are tiny. You drop them, they're gone. They're gone, I can tell you. And I am gonna say this, I'm gonna go officially on record. I drop a lot of stuff. So you might as well put both of them in your hand right now, the way we can yeah. both of them. <laughs> 
This is where having a young guy out here that can actually see is very helpful. And also, I'm so paranoid about running wire. This guy, man, he drags wire, he yanks wire, he's pulling it all over this machine. He is not nervous at all. He told me, hey, he doesn't have to worry about it. His life's not in peril. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's your <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got our little bitty screw here. While he does the grunt work, I'm just gonna do this little. While I understand the importance of the box, little converter on here. Mm-hmm. I hate it. I hate it, yeah. It's not that, there we go. Huh? Yeah, everything that could be in the way on that is probably in the way. So I'm gonna hold the, let me, I'm gonna turn this thing back up over here. What'd you do, rip the box off? <laughs> uh, just the cover. Because I was trying to be careful with it so I wouldn't do that. I, they didn't mess anything up electrically because it's insulated sealed and up. stuff in there and mm -hmm. sealed up. But see these little plastic brackets? Mm -hmm. They, they break? Every single one of them broke, all four mm -hmm. of them. All right, well I got that fixed while he broke that. So let's see what the next <laughs> one is. <laughs> all right, so in typical fashion with this sort of thing, um, <laughs> Look, this stuff right here, a little plastic piece, you're feeding it in. There are little plastic ears on it and they should not break. They shouldn't be that sensitive, but guess what? They did. So what we're gonna do. I've barely put any force on the thing too, so be careful. <laughs> this, this is a, a piece that is sealed from the factory, so it was never intended to be messed with. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to do a couple of things. So right here, this little box, what he's talking about came apart, not a big thing. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna take some super glue because it's supposed to be sealed anyway. Um, Cause if you open it, guess what? It breaks. So um, <laughs> what we're gonna do, we're gonna super glue it and then I'm gonna get some electrical tape and run around it. And between those two things, it will be more than fine. So let's do that right now. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it, it ain't your fault. Stuff happens. It would've happened whether you were out here or not. I'd have done the same thing. What broke it is so there was a there was a wire, it was sitting on a wire, I'm trying to get it behind the wire. Mm -hmm. And so I'm pulling the wire that's there out of the way. And when I pulled the wire out of the way, it ripped the cover off. Nice. So it wasn't even pressure of me forcing the cover or the, the, the box down. It was the pressure of, of the wire of a wire pulling it to the side, which is kind of odd. Yeah. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna run a bead of super glue right there and i'm going to run another bead big thing here try not to glue your fingers to it because while it may not hold the plastic it will definitely hold your fingers all right so we got that done yes yeah, so just go ahead and put that in your mouth yeah that's a, that's a good that's a good <laughs> idea <laughs> all right so we got our glue on here um now if you'll gra grab that electrical tape so you can see that this thing was not absolutely, I just will say this, it wasn't waterproof um, because there was no way that that plastic was waterproof. It wasn't sealed up in there. Just Yeah, they, they, they have the, uh, but they well, have like the, if you look in the inside, it's got that's the where the real insulation in is. Yeah. It's like, that's more like a protector so you don't cut the insulation. So what I'm doing, here's a trick for you old guys who, who don't want to glue your fingers together. That's how you make sure it's dried enough before you touch it. And uh, I can tell you, it barely smeared. So it's dry enough, it's already holding. So we're gonna let that kind of cure for just a minute. We're gonna go eat some breakfast, and when we come back, that glue will be hard as a rock. It will never come apart again, I guarantee you that. It's more stable now than it was when it came from the factory. And I will tell you this also, it's more waterproof now than it was. Because <laughs> it's actually sealed up, man. Um, yeah. Well, then, we're, then we're gonna put the tape on there too. Yep, so. and then we'll have the tape protecting it from heat. Um, I'll take a picture of this. What I will do is I'll have, in fact, I'm gonna do this right here. Right here on this little box, the Garmin thing. That way, if I ever have a problem, I can go on YouTube and I can find out what little box I need to order. All right. I, so, wouldn't, I wouldn't be helping if I wasn't breaking something. Well, that's right. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is this is completely dried already, feels good under the hand. I am going to kind of go back on this and just add one more little layer of the glue, even though it's not necessary. And then that's gonna be completely dry and cured by the time we finish breakfast. All right. all right, so here's where we are. We've got those all wired in there. It was very, very easy. We just ran them through hot to hot, ground to ground. That's all there is to it. Um, we're gonna run a little extra electrical tape around the outside of that connector, although it is not necessary. That's just how the old man rolls. Uh, ran up through here, up around there, out through here. I got a zip tie right there, a zip tie right there. And the piece that I was showing you that I was putting in there 
is right there, and that's what charges this thing. And you just press your. Uh, see if I can do this without with one hand. I did okay. So there it is. That's all there is to it. And when you turn the key on, you'll see powers up. Shows the power there. USB charger is powered up. Everything is working as it should. Just like that. Uh, now it's just a matter of cleaning things up, making sure that no wires hanging across anything, and uh, zip tie a few things, clean things up, button them up, reassemble this machine, and it's that easy. This is really the superest, superest, I made that up. No, that's a real word. That's in the Coach Bob Dictionary. This is the superest, easiest, kindest, funnest install ever, especially when you have somebody helping you. Wind's blowing. All right, so here's what we have. We have the actual Garmin right there. And I'm gonna tell you, no, it is not blocking the view to my mirror. It's the angle of the camera. So for all you safety sallies who freak out, you're blocking your mirror, you crazy man. No, I'm not blocking my mirror. Yeah, I'm, I, I sit down, I sit down here. No, I don't, I don't, that's, okay, anyway. So, so here's the GPS itself. So I'm looking straight at it. If I turn the spider on, now we've got this. So basically this wire that I showed you how to wire in is in the back of this piece here. You've got your Garmin here, and then the wire, I've got it run straight down the back of the handlebar, zip tied right there, and drops down through there, runs down through here, out through the front, which you saw as we installed it. Everything's buttoned up. All that's hanging out now is the uh, old uh, battery charging cable. Everything's buttoned up. It's very, very simple. There are really no things to avoid on this. It just, the big thing when you're running a wire, try to make sure you're not running across anything hot. You're not gonna be on anything that's binding. Um, we debated on where to run it and where not to run it in the long run. You really won't know until it doesn't melt. I mean, I, you know, I'd love to say that there's a magical way and we do try to follow other paths of wires, but there's a lot going on down there and you just worry that you're running across something. If I melt a cable, I guess I'll order another one and reroute it a different way. I, you know, you can't. There's just, there's no way around it. I don't believe we will. The way we routed, it ran, it ran straight here, along through here, and the path of travel, I've got it popped out, grabbing this harness and dropping through the hole right there, and it's right across there in the open, not touching anything. There are no snag hazards, no suspension parts are moving to bind it, and everything looks absolutely fine. So I think that's gonna be a good spot for us. Uh, other than that, anything I can think of, I'll let you know. I'm. I'm going to turn the spider on, let you see what it looks like here. So I have my phone mounted low. I used to have my phone where the GPS is. So now I have my phone mounted closer to me. Uh, when it rains, obviously now I can get my phone out of the way. This thing is waterproof. That's another benefit to having this, uh, this, this hardwired. It's waterproof when it's hardwired. If you are, I'll show you on the back. If you are running through this, this is the USB charging port. It is not waterproof, I guarantee you that. You've got a cable there and water is running around behind this thing or actually this would be the front of it where the water is slamming it in the rain. You're gonna have a problem. You're gonna have to take it off of your charge, which your is gonna drop your lighting to 40%. So we're gonna show you what had happened when we had this thing going. So here's the view of it. It looks beautiful. The display is really bright, even in the sun. And we've got it at 100% right now, but let's show you what was going on. If I didn't have it hooked to the battery, what it would do- Or hooked to the USB. Or hooked to the USB, yeah. If I didn't have it hooked to a, an alternate power source, it would drop to about 40%. Let's see where we are here. That's 30%. Let's go up just a little bit. I wanna show you exactly where it was. That's probably about 40, 40%. It dropped to there. And I can tell you, now we're in my garage. It's dimly lit in here. You can see it pretty well. But I will say this, in the sunshine, you couldn't see that. And with sunglasses on, there's no way you could see it. And then I would go to turn it up and it would say hook to external power source with cable provided in order to adjust brightness. So I knew immediately that I was gonna have to have an alternate power source uh, for it, not just the battery. So there you are, super duper bright, looks great. Um, easy install, I mean, literally, we probably weren't out here an hour total. That's disassembly, assembly and everything. So there you have it, three Stooges and a Zumo XT. Mission accomplished, so I want you to do me a favor this week, go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself, and remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Now you go seize the day, we'll see you on the road real soon.